Operation Shifting Tides is rolling into Rainbow Six Siege with a bang. Stop it for me! The bang in question is the sound of the first bolt-action sniper rifle to be deployed by Team Rainbow. It belongs to an attacker named Kali, and it comes with an explosive underbarrel gadget that lets her use it for more than just punching holes in walls and operators. On the other side of the action, you might notice strange things happening to your grenades, as a defender named Wamai deploys a new gadget with magnetic appeal. Let's show you how these things work, and take a look at the updated attractions on the newly reworked theme park map coming with Operation Shifting Tides. There's no escaping that sound when Kali is in the round. As the head of an Indian private military company, this medium speed, medium armor attacker ordered herself up a custom CSRX 300 rifle, and it has a bite to match its bark. A headshot is an instant kill, naturally, but a hit to the torso is an instant down. One shot can penetrate through multiple breakable walls, or through multiple defenders, or a combination of both. It can obliterate wooden barricades and unreinforced hatches, and it has a variable 5x and 12x scope. This gun is powerful, but it isn't exactly subtle. In addition to the unmistakable sound, it creates a clear visual trail that shows the defenders where the shot came from, and any defender unlucky enough to be downed by it will automatically spin to face the direction of the shot, giving them a bit more intel on Kali's position. But, as they say, knowing is only half the battle. The other half is not getting shot by Kali. Strong as it is, the CSRX 300 can't penetrate reinforced walls or hatches, but this is where Kali's gadget comes in. From her underbarrel launcher, she fires LV explosive lances. These projectiles burrow into breakable and reinforced surfaces, then they explode on both sides. That line of bandit batteries protecting your reinforced walls, gone. Helpful mute jammers, gone. If a lance hits a surface it can't burrow through, it'll still dig in and explode. So say goodbye to your maestro evil eyes, your barbed wire, and your deployable shields. Kali's gadget lets her do strategic damage to defender gadgets that is normally handled by frag grenades or Thatcher's EMP grenades, making her a powerful force for destroying enemy defenses and advancing her team's push to the objective. While the lance explosions will create holes in breakable surfaces, they won't create openings in reinforced ones for you to peek through. And they don't pop open Mira's black mirrors. So Kali's no substitute for a hard breacher. Her lances are vulnerable to being destroyed by Jaeger's ADS, or grabbed by Wamai's gadget, which we'll tell you about next. If you're quick, you can also destroy a lance before it explodes by damaging the tail end, not the tip that appears on the other side of the wall. Rest assured that the lance only does minimal damage to operators, because when it comes to taking damage from Kali, you've got bigger concerns. That beefy bolt-action CSRX 300 and her two sidearm options, the P226 Mark 25 or the C75 Auto. Now let's talk about Wamai and explain why your grenades and flashbangs are suddenly behaving oddly. This medium armor, medium speed Kenyan defender is employed by Kali's PMC, and she brought him along when she joined Team Rainbow. Wamai has a gadget called the Magnetic Neutralizing Electronic Targeting System, aka the Magnet. Magnet devices will stick to surfaces when thrown and act on any attacker projectile that passes within their active radius and line of sight. It goes like this. First, the magnet stops the projectile, resets its detonation timer, and pulls it in. The projectile then detonates at the magnet's location, and the magnet itself explodes. One magnet can grab one projectile. Flashes will still flash, frags will still frag, but they'll do so at a time and place dictated by Wamai's gadget. And here's the thing. It's not just flashes, frags, and smokes. It's ashes breaching rounds. 
It's Capitao's bolts, Ying's candelas, Nomad's air jabs, and a whole cluster of fuses charges, if you're really dedicated. It's Thatcher's EMPs, Zofia's concussions and impacts, and Gridlock's track stingers, which will still spike things up, so use the extra time from the detonation timer reset to shoot them first. The magnet can meddle with a lot of gadgets, but it won't mess with Hibana's X Kairos pellets or Twitch's shock drone charges. Neutralizing gadgets is good, but Wamai can go one step further. With some creative placement, he's not just relocating projectiles to a safe detonation spot. He's putting them in places to cause problems for the attackers. Capitao could end up roasting his teammates if he's not careful with his bolts. Friendly, cease fire! Sledge might want to think twice about dropping grenades down through a hole he smashed in the floor. And Goyo's Vulcan shield becomes a little more dangerous with a magnet device stuck to the back. The devices themselves are easily destroyed, if attackers spot them, and Wamai gains them gradually throughout the round, similar to Legion and his goo mines. While Jaeger's ADS simply neutralizes incoming objects, Wamai takes a more creative approach by moving those objects around and sowing uncertainty among the attacking team. Uncertainty that he can capitalize on with his MP5K or AUG A2, and Keratos 357 or P12 sidearms. You've been watching these new operators do their thing on Theme Park, the latest map in the Siege lineup to get thoroughly reworked for balance and better competition. First thing you'll notice is that the large train that used to bisect the second floor is gone, making for quicker navigation and more close quarters skirmishes. Reload. The haunted first floor section has been transformed into a throne room and armory, complete with a dragon-guarded stairway. Elsewhere, a cheeky new walkway above another staircase creates interesting opportunities for defenders and attackers alike. While some new arcade cabinets provide extra cover at a crucial second floor window. And the first floor arcade entrance is completely blocked. The new theme park map will be free for all players when Operation Shifting Tides launches. The new operators, Kali and Wamai, will be available at launch for Year 4 Pass holders and Uplay Plus subscribers, and a week later, all players will be able to unlock them with Renown or R6 credits. For more on Rainbow Six Siege, subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit us at news.ubisoft.com.